How many of you guys, show of hands, have gone to networking events and only returned with 30 business cards, zero FaceTime, and an uncertainty on how to follow up? Feels like you've wasted two hours of precious after work time. And as an entrepreneur, I'm sure it's even more frustrating because those hours could really be used for something productive. So I've asked some networking event experts to come join me in Workonomy so we can discuss how to efficiently build your professional network through face-to-face -face networking beyond social media. We take the questions we get in our Workonomy groups on LinkedIn and Facebook and bring them to the experts. Today, I have Michael and Matthew Espinoza from TexasBusinessCalendar.com from San Antonio and Austin, where anyone can find their right networking event for them, whether you're a business professional, looking for a co-founder, a budding entrepreneur, and anything down that line. So without further ado, here's Michael and Matthew Espinoza on how to build your professional network efficiently. Uh, from Texas Business Calendar, I have Michael and Matthew Espinoza. Thank you guys for showing up. I really appreciate it. I know uh, you guys had to drive from a different city. Um, so super appreciate your time, and uh, I'm really excited to get into how to efficiently build your professional network. Uh, before we get into it though, I would love Michael and Matthew if you could tell us a little bit about your business, how long you've been doing it, and, and why you're doing it. Okay, first thanks. Thanks for having us, Jason. It's a short hop from San Antonio. Those, those of you know, most of you know, it's, it's pretty close, so we didn't have to go too far, uh, fortunately. <laughs> um, really, tell you a little bit about the calendar. Kind of Matthew and I both had an idea few years ago that there there wasn't a good place to easily find all the events business related in the city and I'm big on networking always have been so we decided you know hey, how hard can it be to, to put a calendar and aggregate all the business events everything is going on well a few years later we know don't we Matthew yeah, it's a pretty big challenge <laughs> yeah we, we started in San Antonio mm -hmm. and we've we've gone to Austin Dallas Houston we're slowly going out throughout Texas so hopefully, all you know, major Texas cities will all have calendars soon. We're working on it. Matthew's diligently working on on the back end of it. He does all the development work for us. Very cool. Anyway, so we're gonna dive right in. And uh, you know, first of all, if you're not networking, uh, whether you're a you know a business professional or an entrepreneur, um, I would suggest you get into that mindset of maybe you should network because it is all about who you know. And uh, you make a better impression in person, you know, shaking hands, smiling, making eye contact. So um, without further ado, which I say every time in our work economy chats, um, I want to talk about pros, you know, reasons why we should be networking. What we've found is people network for different reasons. And when I think of networking, everybody kind of has their own idea of what networking is. When I think about network, and I mean getting out, meeting people, and building your professional network for the long term, no matter if you're... You're an entrepreneur, you work for corporate America, whatever you do, you're always gonna need that professional network. Mm -hmm. So the earlier you start, the bigger you build your network, the more successful you're gonna be at everything you do in business. It's just, you know, it's a fact. You, we all know that one or two person persons <laughs> they can that just are connected and they just seem to know everybody. Yeah. It's because they're always out there meeting new people. Yeah, and one thing to add about that is I think that a lot of people think about networking when they start to realize they want a new job or it's the end of the month and they need an extra sale. And if networking is something that's built in that you do on a consistent basis, whether you're looking for new opportunities or you know, you're just going on your normal day to day, it's super important to keep networking top of mind because you know, if, if you're looking for a big sale in order to keep your business going, networking for 48 hours straight is not gonna be benefit to anybody involved. Right, yeah. and I think that's really important is that it should be embedded into your strategy. Right. It's not something you do one-off, um, yeah. which, I mean, yeah, that's, that's a very good piece of advice because I think most people are like, it comes from a place of almost panic. Exactly. Like, oh, I haven't done this yet, so I gotta yeah. go to this one right now. Especially you know? with people looking for new jobs. Like, that's Absolutely. where it seems. It's like, if, if, if you build relationships and you build it into your job already, you know, that next opportunity becomes easier and easier because you already have those relationships and can make those asks. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other kind of cool pros to, to networking? I think one thing is know why you're out there. Again, is it a new job? Is it, um, is it you're looking for a partner to start a business with? Are you new to the city? I mean, of course, in our city, even Austin, you know, San Antonio, there's so many people moving here that a big reason people get out and network is just to meet other people in the community. Mm -hmm. They may come from East Coast, West Coast, they really don't know anybody. So the only way they can meet people in the business community, fellow business owners, business professionals, is to get to some event. Right. You know, that's probably, I would almost say, that's probably the primary reason 
a lot of people get out now. We run into every every day. You go to events, we run into somebody new that's new to San Antonio or been here, you know, three to six months, and they're out just trying to get to know the lay of the land, so to speak. I'm looking over here. The camera's over here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, it, it's just, it is important. We are human beings. We kind of, while a lot of us do like to work alone, we still need a pack. We still need a tribe. We right. still need a support system. And I think networking is that. Absolutely. Um, cool. All right. I want to talk about uh, how do you, where and how to find the right networking events for you. I think that's just as important as just going out. Is, um, you know, if, if you're going to the wrong event, you're gonna sit there like a wallflower and, and not really know what's going on. Um, yeah, any, any, any advice on that? So I would say, you know, from our process and with SA Business Calendar and our other cities, how we find the events for our community and our audiences, you know, right now, uh, you know, the love-hate relationship with Facebook, everybody puts their event on Facebook. Facebook is a great way to see what friends on Facebook you have that are going to events. Um, Eventbrite just went public. Eventbrite's another one where you know they're continuing to build their strategies to pretty much have every event built on Eventbrite. Um, but also that's the great part of you know getting started networking. If it's not something you normally do, going to a networking event and figuring out where everybody's hanging out, what organizations are they involved in, and you can really build this kind of ripple effect of you know, this is, there's this many chambers, this is a chamber, you know, people like your business are involved in that I think you should get plugged into. Mm -hmm. So making the ask in the networking is a great opportunity to build, you know, a small talk conversation as well. Like, hey, what other events like this do you go to? Or what communities am I not thinking about? I think sometimes considering networking events is practice areas to figure out how to network. It, it, it sounds kind of strange, but you know, we'll, we'll probably get more into it, but some of the speed networking events that we do, mm -hmm. we, we tell people, use this as an opportunity to practice your pitch. And once you figure out your business pitch, it's something that you can take to, you know, small talk and personal conversations with friends and small talk and just public in general. So, you know, using networking events is this place where you kind of tweak and practice your pitch and, your pa you know, having a cheat sheet of small conversation questions. I mean, right. we all get intimidated in the moment from everybody who's, an introvert to an extrovert, they all forget what they're going to say sometimes. So right. having something to be able to guide yourself could, could be good. And if you approach it, if you approach networking, going to events, talking to people with, I want to meet new people and I want to know about you. Mm -hmm. That you sincerely, you've got to sincerely want to know, know and learn from other people. If you take that attitude right off the bat when you start your stress level in networking, your, your desire to network will increase a lot. And it's some simple questions, right? Maybe on your phone, you, you, you put in there, why did you come to the event? Do you know any other events like this? Um, just you, you have to be inquisitive. Mm -hmm. And if you take that attitude, I'm going to go to this event and I'm going to meet some great people and I'm going to ask some questions and learn, it just, it never gets, it never gets old. Because people, we go to some, some weeks, I can go to 12, 15 events. Matthew can do the same thing. And people go, don't you get tired of it? I said, we don't because... I always know there's somebody new and exciting and different I'm going to meet. Mm. And you can't ask for anything better than that than always something new and meeting new people. Right. And you've got to have that attitude in networking. It's not all about, you know, pitch, 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 pitch. It's learn, experience, you know, that kind of thing. Right. And that brings us to a part that I really want to discuss, which is uh, don't be that guy or girl <laughs> um, at a networking event. I think, you know, we had our pre-call. And uh, I love this angle of just like, just like any business or any scenario, there's always that stereotypical person. Yes. And networking is not an exception. <laughs> um, so, you know, what are a couple of big don'ts? Don't be this person at a networking event. I mean, I'm sure you'll have some, some specifics, but the one thing that I, I, I always think back to is be, be yourself, you know, as much as there are people out there that will shake everybody's hand in a room at a networking event. There's people that are forced to be there that they don't want to be there. And, you know, being yourself is way better than trying to put on this fake persona because it will drive you into the ground. You know, you, you will get frustrated. You know, being yourself, there's someone else in the room that probably, you know, is just as timid or even has a similar personality with you that, you know, that, that in itself is don't be that person you're not. Right. Is that first kind of oh, I like that. persona. I'm and probably it, it's, it's, we've, all, we've all met that person, that man or woman that just, you're at an event and they walk up and just hand you their business card. <laughs> sometimes they'll introduce themselves, sometimes they'll just hand you your, your card and keep walking. And you're going, 
what is this? Why? You know, the term I like to use, empathetic networking. When you're at an event, when you're networking, empathize and think about what the other person is thinking about when you walk up to them and hand them a card and walk away. Like, what does that mean? When somebody does yeah. it to you, you respond, what is this? Mm-hmm. And you throw it away or put it in your pocket and you never think about it again. It's the, the card flipper, the card... You know, the card shark. The card, card shark. Card That's shark, right. Really. Earlier we were talking. Card shark. It's just, I mean, the cards are flying. And, and it's funny because after the event's over, you look on the floor and you'll see that person's <laughs> card on the floor. And you go... That's probably not the most successful networker out there. Probably not. Even though they, they're like, oh, I gave out 120 business cards to them. They're walking away like that was successful. But if they're not taking it with them and know there's value in it, then what's, it's just a piece of paper. And the other thing is catch yourself talking too much. Mm-hmm. If, you, right. if you're just talking and talking and talking, you've been talking to somebody for five or ten minutes and you realize, you know what? I don't know anything about the other person I'm talking to. It's like slam on the brakes and... And even apologize. Say, I'm sorry. I've been talking too much. Tell me about you. <laughs> mm. that, that, those are two of the biggest things. The cards and the talking too much. People just... And some of them do it just out of nerves. It's not their... You know, they just... Some people talk when they're nervous. You know, so you have to realize, I'm a talker when I'm nervous. So I'm going to take a breath <laughs> and let the other person talk and, you know, and listen. Um, are there any, any tips to... to for, for the introvert, if essentially, to kind of break out of that shell. Like you said, I think coming at it with an inquisitive attitude, that's probably the greatest way to do this. It sounds like if you're coming there to learn, then there's nothing to be shy about because you're open and vulnerable. So. One, one tip, I think, is to ask people to, like, kind of to allude to what you were talking about, ask people you know to introduce you to other people. Mm. Say, you know what, I'm kind of I'm not that comfortable networking. Do you mind introducing me to a few people? And I guarantee people do not mind introducing you to other people at events. I mean, it happens all the time. They'll take you and they'll say, you know, meet so-and-so, meet so-and-so. And like, that helps kind of break the ice and get you out there talking. And once you get going, you know, you, you, you see people, I see people that are, and then all of a sudden they start talking and they're, by the end of the evening, they're talking to everybody. They just needed that little push. Right. I mean, what yeah, do you think? So start with the organizer, I think, is the biggest yes. thing. You know, the organizers, whether they're doing this for free or paid or lead generate whatever they're putting on their event for they're putting it on for a reason that probably goes above them and their their business they're probably wanting to give back they want to connect people in the community that they they may be going 100 miles an hour during the event and during the event uh, before the event and during the event but um, they'll, they'll be the first to connect you with you know what do you do oh you've never been here before this is our power community member that will happily introduce you to everybody else and you know they they it's pretty obvious who the organizers are because they tend to you know, have different shirts or name tags to be like, hey, I'm the one putting this on. If you have any questions, come to me. Yeah, because they want it to be a successful event. So right. the more they can get people to connect and talk, the more people are going to leave and say, that was a great event. So they have a vested interest in making sure you're happy at that event. Well, that's I huge. That's very helpful, especially for me. So I appreciate that, guys. It's yeah. great tips. Great tips. Um, so let's get into a little bit of the speed networking. So this is something that I've actually done a couple times. Um, I know that you guys have done it a few times. And uh, I have to say, probably the most fun I have networking is speed networking. And it probably it's because it's taking that stress and that pressure out. Because right. it's like, I only got two minutes here. Yeah. I, there's, I can't dwell on anything. Yeah. I have to say my piece and then keep my mouth shut after that. You know? yeah. um, so I, I'd love to talk about you know, why speed networking. I mean, it's also kind of, it's not too recent, but it is somewhat of a recent phenomenon. I think I see more of it now than I ever have. Yeah, I think you're um, probably right, because overall I think we see more events now in speed networking. But let's talk about what speed networking yeah, is first. For those of you that <laughs> do not know what speed networking events are, they're basically like speed dating. They can have a couple, of, a couple of different formats. You can either sit at a table with six to eight other people, and then everybody introduces themselves, and then you move to a separate table, and by the end of the evening, you've pretty much met most people in the room by moving around from table to table. Or you can do a face, face-to-face where you sit across from someone, you introduce each other to each other, you're introduced, and then you just move chairs, and by the end of the evening, you've, you've met. The idea is simple. You wanna meet as many people as you can that evening, and a speed networking event is a structured event that allows you to meet most everybody in the room that evening. You typically get anywhere from a minute to three minutes, depending on the size of of the event, to give your elevator pitch, whatever you want to call it, your intro, however however you 
whatever you want to say, that's, that's what you do in that minute to two minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so what are the benefits uh, of you know, a process like this? Well, we're fortunate enough to team up with Office Depot and Office Max in San Antonio. We did a series of four speed networking events, and we picked the speed networking events for one specific reason is there's some of the best events to get started. If you're not comfortable networking, it's a good way to go to an event and you know exactly what's going to happen. There's no need for you to try to introduce yourself to anybody. You're sitting down, you're introducing yourself, and you have to do your elevator pitch for one to two minutes to everybody in the room. So you have that ability to fine tune it over that hour, hour and a half time frame. And that's why we like to do those and we encourage people when they're starting to network to use those events to start out with. And then just to add, it's fun. I have fun, fun doing it. it. I mean, Absolutely. I honestly do. Uh, you know, as, as a self-proclaimed introvert, it's still tons of fun because, you know, I, I meet people every day, but to, to have like a, a focused three minutes with someone right. is, I, most of the people I talk to during the day, I don't get the three minutes exactly. of focus. So it's point. amazing to get that like 10 times yeah. in a row. Absolutely. Um, it, it's just, it's a really great experience. If you haven't done speed networking yet, I would suggest trying it out. Um, I would also suggest checking sabusinesscalendar.com for some of those events and austinbusinesscalendar.com too. So I definitely want to talk about following up. So when we're talking about networking, uh, we're talking about the mindset you need, the, uh, the strategy you have, um, but it all means nothing if you don't follow up. Absolutely. So uh, please, you know, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the importance of that. Well, let's start about the number one problem is you collect these cards. Let's say you've gone to your first speed networking event. You've met 30 people, you've got 30 cards here. And a lot of these people you think, maybe these are good leads or people I wanna continue to build a business relationship with. So what do you do? You get the cards, you put them on your desk, you throw them in your Outlook, Rolodex, whatever you use, and you put them in the, in the drawer and they just sit there. Then you go to your next event and you just keep, so your drawer keeps getting full of, full of cards. And what happens, you lose those those leads and those opportunities. So you've got to have a system in place to follow up. And I know everybody says that, and that's the most difficult part of doing it. But at least take the cards, go through the handful that you really want to follow up with, and put, it, put them somewhere digitally in your phone, in your computer, wherever, and remind yourself you want to at least in, say, hey, it was great to meet you the next day, some type of initial follow up and don't let it in there. Let me define kind of follow-up follow in the sense that I don't mean following up where I'm trying to sell them something. I mean following yeah. up where I really want a long-term business relationship with this person. I think it would be mutually beneficial. Right. Mm -hmm. If you're just following up to sell, I mean, you know, that, that's your prerogative. Again, that empathy. Do you like it when the next day, and I've all of you have probably done this, you've gone to an event, you dropped your business card in a bowl or you've handed it to somebody and the next morning you get three emails hi Michael it was great to meet you would you like to have coffee I'd like to discuss what we do and how we can help you mm. it's like yeah come on we all know that means nothing it's a canned response that's a super that's a template right yeah there. absolutely and, tell, right? and right. people ignore it they ignore it now more than ever mm -hmm. I, this just came to me because I'm going to an event today at Galvanize in Austin and mm. uh, it, it's an event first but it's also networking yeah. so I wanted to ask about that kind of uh, scenario where you know there are some events where it's just like this is a networking event hour and a half we're all gonna we have activities and boom but where I'm going there's gonna be a panel you know a happy hour probably hopefully a panel and then you know probably a networking hour afterwards um, do you approach these kinds of events any differently uh, in terms of because y yes and the fact that I would choose those probably over the oh, exactly okay. to me you just described yeah. to me the perfect business event okay that's absolutely the perfect business event so so one of one of the most interesting things that I've noticed on the tons of different events that we put on um, specifically one which uh, is called startup grind it, there's a chapter here in Austin and tons of other cities an entrepreneur is interviewed by uh, a host and a one-on-one -on -one fireside chat and afterwards talking to that entrepreneur the idea of startup grind is to get people that have been over the grind and built a successful company mm -hmm. so these are entrepreneurs that are probably super busy that you may not get a chance to talk to but 
you know, focusing and, and sticking around long enough to chat with them right afterwards, and even probably with the panel today, it's one of the best times to talk to people, assuming they're not trying to get out the door immediately, mm -hmm. if they're sticking around, because they're kind of on this high of just spilling everything they have on the topic or theme at hand, and that they still want to continue this conversation, and they're in the mode of, I want to give back to this audience that I was just telling you about, and you know, I, I mentioned here's my email and things like that. Yeah. Um, so that that's one way to specifically approach in those moments, especially because I think what draws a lot of people there is is the speakers right. or the experts talking on the to topics or themes. Um, and then with those, you know, being aware to get there early and, and kind of stick around late before that to happen. Some people will come for the networking and then say hello and then kind of leave for the content or do the other way mm -hmm. around. You know, with Startup Grind, people would show up at 7 o'clock for the, the the fireside chat. Right. And it's like, okay, well, if you came here an hour ago, I could have introduced you to this person, this person, this person. Um, so, you know, just coming early and staying late. If, you, if of course, timing you can. Right. But you'd say that's the best way to maximize an event like that. Is yeah, by, absolutely. Because uh, yeah, a lot of people do duck out. You know, they think they got what they needed. But the beautiful thing about these events is, you know, you don't know who you might meet. No, right? You know what I mean? That's no. the beautiful thing about it. So, And because of all the events we go to, I mean, we accelerated that process of the people we, we met. I've met people that there was no way I could get an appointment with them if I tried. But they were sitting right, standing right mm. next to me. I had no idea who they were. Somebody walked up. Oh, do you know us? You know, or introduced themselves to me. And like, wow, I, I've always wanted to meet you. Or I've heard of your company. I'd love, you know, I want to know more about it. It's just, you've got to stay there. You know, and again, the, the event you just described is probably one of the best events. That's what we call it, San Antonio Business Calendar, Austin Business Calendar, because all the business events to uh, to us are a, an opportunity to network. Right. And that's any, the way any you have to look. Is. Any any event, right. even the four 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 people that show up at an event, I've been to, and I've still had a great experience and made some great connections. All right. Well, we're about out of time, so I want to thank you guys so much for for taking this time to to share these tips with myself and our work economy group. Um, want to really quickly before we sign off find out how can people reach you guys and learn more about uh, sabusinesscalendar.com hey, well, thanks Jason for having us on the show really appreciate it um, you can get in touch with us Michael at sabusinesscalendar.com Matthew at sabusinesscalendar.com you can go to sabusinesscalendar.com we have a contact form there uh, we can, you can also reach us on social media yeah Facebook it's under sabusinesscalendar.com um, Twitter it's sabiz calendar and then instagram it's spelled out sa business calendar so. awesome thank you and uh we all put i'll make sure to put the link to their website under our video so if you guys do want the newsletter if you guys are in this area in the texas area and uh want to have literally just almost every business event that you could fathom uh <laughs> in one area which i use now by the way it's great <laughs> um definitely check that out um thank you for joining us in work economy i appreciate it um, if you liked what you saw, please visit our Work Economy Facebook group. You can visit it either you can search Work Economy or you can visit through the Office Depot Facebook page. We also have a Work Economy group on our LinkedIn page, and that's where we uh, get a lot more discussion. We have these videos live there, but we also get a lot of our ideas and our questions from you, the entrepreneur, in those groups. And then we find an expert to kind of will expertly answer the question. So um, thanks again for signing in with us and thank you guys so much and I'm sure we're gonna see you guys real soon. Thanks, thanks for having us. us.